long time no sit down video. Today there is a typhoon on its way to Korea and so it is very wet. It is almost sunset, so I'm just in a very cozy mood and I thought now would be a good time to film that Q&A that uh, I promised you guys. I got your questions on Instagram. I have a nice little cup of tea, but also I have something to show you. Uh, to be honest, I did not think we were going to hit this milestone as fast as we did. I kind of wanted to prepare a more special video for you guys, um, but we just hit this so quickly and I'm, I'm so, so thankful. So yeah, I got my silver button. Thank you guys so much. We, Kurt and I tried to do an unboxing ah! because I was more excited for like actually just reaching that goal, but he was very excited to have like the physical button. Wow. <laughs> And it was a, a little bit of a fail. So um, yeah, apologies for that, but just thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm really, really shocked that we reached that point. And it's all because of you guys. Um, yeah, just, I think I, I kind of already talked about it in another video and I don't want to get emotional in this one. So just, I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you so, so much. You guys are absolutely wonderful. So anyway, let's just jump into the questions. I kind of summarizes them because a lot of people asked similar questions so if i'm not quoting directly from your comment i apologize first and foremost how did we get married go into detail so a lot of people missed this video i posted it i'll put it wherever it goes um yes i got married kurt and i are are married and we are living together I explain it all in that video so if you're interested in why i am now calling him my husband um that's why we're married yeah we've almost been married an entire year so get on it guys anyway yes we did get married um both of us kind of see marriage as not a really romantic thing um for for us we understand other people but for us marriage is more of like a government confirmation of what we already know so we were already in a committed relationship we knew that but marriage was just our way of telling the government officially does that make sense we literally took a half day off of work we went to the city hall we signed our paper there is a little photo zone um literally it says photo zone and then we went out to eat we went to a cafe we went to a dog cafe and hung out with um some corgis and that was it um yeah, we haven't, we didn't take any pictures or anything. It wasn't, to us, it wasn't a really big deal. I don't know if we'll ever have like a proper wedding or anything. I did get a really pretty wedding dress on Etsy. So maybe one day we'll actually take photos because I do just really want to wear that dress. And um, it was $40 and it's like a beautiful vintage wedding dress that was almost custom made for me. Like the, the sizing is ridiculous. Anyway, that's not the question. Maybe one day we will have wedding photos, maybe for like our 10th anniversary, we'll see. But yeah, I got married and that is how, not a big deal. Um, yeah. Number two, I get this all the time on YouTube. I got it for this Q and A. When am I having kids? <laughs> And I understand a lot of people have been trained by society to think that, oh, you're getting married. Oh, you're going to have kids. And that's like not my deal. I don't want kids. I love kids. Um, I used to babysit all the time. I used to legitimately work at a daycare. Um, I have nothing against children, but I just don't want one of my own. Kurt feels the same. So I just kind of get tired when people ask like, when are you going to have kids? Oh, is a kid coming soon? This is so random, but I get nauseous a lot like if i don't eat um like if i wake up in the morning and i haven't had breakfast sometimes if i say like oh i feel nauseous some of even my friends will say like are you pregnant and i'm just like no and it's not like a funny funny joke like i'm not interested in having children do we have names already picked out for our future dog children oh yeah dogs will not happen until we move to america though because we don't want to um, force them through that transition. For now, I will just foster dogs. I'm counting on my friends and my family to have a lot of kids so I can be like the cool aunt and pick the kids up and take them shopping and, and be fun. And then when I get annoyed with them, I can uh, drop them off at their parents' house. That's, that's the plan. Okay, next up, fears and doubts about YouTube and how did they change? Hmm. For me with YouTube, I didn't really have that many fears because I wasn't really expecting 
anything out of it. Like I've been making videos of my trips and posting them since before I even had a camera phone. I had an entire channel dedicated to like mashing up K-pop and like My Chemical Romance music videos. I think my, my main fear, and it's still a fear that I have that I don't think will ever go away, is just being misunderstood or like editing something out that might further explain my thought and having someone misunderstand and like misconstrue my idea. That is really my, my main concern is just that people will, because they get little glimpses of my life. And granted, yes, it is glimpses of my life that I choose, edit and okay and send off to the world. Sometimes we make mistakes and sometimes something isn't clear and sometimes we speak incorrectly and and sometimes we make a joke that doesn't really sound like it's a joke and so, so on and so forth. So that's just like a consistent fear that I will always have. And I think that that's just like an internet thing. Um, you're always gonna have someone who, whether intentionally or unintentionally misunderstands you. So. But as far as starting YouTube, I really wasn't worried because I think I got really comfortable with my Tumblr family. Comment down below if you found me on Tumblr first. I just like grew this really sweet, lovely community on on tumblr and so i knew that when i posted these videos i was going to be like mainly talking to them and so i just really felt at home and it was great and so now yeah it's just nice that the family has grown and the vibe is still really nice and chill i'm very very lucky okay number four only one person asked this but i want to address it someone asked about like why i deleted some of my old vlogs um i didn't delete them i just privated them and mainly it was because i just wasn't proud of them. When I first started YouTube, I really was filming almost daily vlogs. Some of them I just didn't like, some of them I didn't think had a purpose, some of them I wanted to remake. As the creator, you see so many mistakes and things you don't like about things that you've made, and with the ones that I have taken down, those are like exponential. Like I really, I just really don't like looking at them. So that's why they're down. But um, I do have a few that are still like unlisted. If you look in my playlists, you can find some more of my old vlogs. They're just a little bit harder to find, but they're there. So number five, imposter syndrome. Do I suffer from it? Yes. I would love to meet someone who says that they don't suffer from imposter syndrome. I almost feel guilty <laughs> when when people comment and say like oh i love the the editing on this or oh my god this editing must have taken so much time or whatever because the way that i film especially when i film vlogs um it's very chronological i don't do a whole lot of editing i think that the important part of my vlogging is the actual filming part of it if i film well i don't have to edit much um if that makes sense the more people i meet and and they also feel like imposters it it kind of makes me feel like we all are i don't know i i feel yes i do feel like an imposter but i also feel okay in that like does that make any sense that was a ramble and a half nope i'm gonna keep i'm gonna move on next up someone asked about korean beauty standards am i affected by them etc um to be completely honest no <laughs> because i'm not korean i think if i were asian i would feel very very pressured by society to fit into a certain look but because i am very very obviously not korean i am very very obviously not asian um i don't feel that pressure like i'm always gonna look different. I think that my, my self-confidence has actually improved here because I feel so greatly removed from the beauty standards. I think the only time that I really feel affected by the Korean beauty, beauty standards is just when um, I might be shopping and there's like a certain trend that is geared towards like very thin Korean girl body frame and I've got hips <laughs> so I can't like things don't really look that great on me for me it's not my body is the problem it's the clothes are the problem it took me a really I want to make a whole different video on this but, like it took me a really really long time to get to that point but thinking when you're going clothes shopping and you put on a pair of pants that are too small if you think ah oh, my butt is too big that is incorrect the pants are too small the clothes are incorrect. Your body is fine. You just gotta tell yourself, it's the clothes that don't fit me. It's not me that doesn't fit the clothes. So yes. On top of that, next question, do Korean people stare at you? 
Mm -hmm. To be completely honest, in America, as a redhead, I am, I am so used to people staring at me and coming up and talking to me about my hair. Um, I actually am more comfortable in Korea just because it's not common for strangers to come up to other strangers and say like, oh my god, your, your jacket is so cute or something like that. But in America, it's, I'm, I'm literally not joking when I say every day, if I go out in public, some stranger will come up to me and say something about my hair. Like, oh, your hair's really pretty. Oh my God, is your hair natural? That's so amazing. Which I'm for, I'm thankful. I'm very proud of my hair. I do love it, thank you. But it's literally a constant every, every single day. Someone will say something, ask a redheaded friend. I guarantee you they will agree. Um, this is something that happens. But in Korea, nobody does that. So if people stare, um, I either don't really notice or I'm so used to it because literally since I was born, I was born with hair, guys. Like people coming and touching my hair, stuff like that in America. So yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me here. I actually think it's less here, which is wild. So thank you, Korea, for not talking to strangers, even though it bothers me other times when I'm feeling lonely. So Hmm. Number eight, am I religious slash spiritual? So I come from an Irish Catholic family on both sides. My mom is also Hungarian, just for fun. And um, so yeah, I was technically, I was like loosely raised Catholic. We were like sort of the Catholics that went to church on Easter and Christmas. Um, so I've been like baptized and con did communion and confirmed. Um, little known fact, when you are confirmed in the Catholic religion, you get to choose a saint's name to tack on to your own as if my name wasn't already long enough. And the name that I chose was actually the Celtic goddess of spring. I am not religious now. I wasn't really back then either. I definitely am spiritual. Like I do believe that things are connected in a way that we don't understand. I don't think that there's necessarily like a creator or anything like that, but I do, I do think that there is some common thread that we don't really understand and we probably never will and I don't think we really need to. I'm not the biggest fan of organized religion. I think that anything good that comes from a religion can exist without the belief system, if that makes sense. Like I think the good parts of organized religion are the community and the shared moral code. You can have that in a soccer team. You know, I think that um, unfortunately, religion often includes like, I'm right and you're wrong, and I wish it didn't. But um, we can talk about that when I see you in hell, probably, so. Hmm. Sort of related, number nine, paranormal experiences in Korea. So here's the thing, I made an entire video about that and that's one of the videos that I actually privated because I wasn't super happy with it and I felt like it was kind of boring. So we'll link it up here or up here. I definitely believe that like certain energies can stay here and my family has had a lot of interesting, unexplainable coincidences with um, some of our family members that have passed. Like I said, I think that things are connected in ways that we don't currently and probably never will understand. I did have a very scary ghost experience though, which I will talk about there. And um, maybe don't watch it if you're planning on doing like a countryside staying overnight thing in Korea. Just a warning. And finally, number 10, um, questions about how do you solo travel with anxiety? Oof. For me, I, I almost feel more anxious when I'm with other people because when I'm solo traveling, I am in complete control as far as what I'll do that day. Um, if I'm feeling really nervous about a place, um, cause I do get like weird vibes and I like suddenly want to leave places sometimes. Um, if I'm with another person, it's either like embarrassing or you feel like a burden when you're like, Hey, Hey man, like I really want to go. Um, but when you're solo traveling, you can kind of handle that. But in general, like just being anxious about solo travel as a whole, um, I would say definitely just start small, even if it's literally like taking a walk around your neighborhood, like do it just to like be okay with being by yourself. Um, and then expand that to maybe you go to a cafe by yourself for the day. Um, maybe you expand it to taking the bus somewhere. Maybe you expand it, expand it, expand it. I wouldn't like first solo trip ever come to Korea for three months. No, do not do that. I would freak out. I would probably freak out now 
if I did that and, and went somewhere for three months all by myself. So definitely like number one, build it up. Number two, have a companion with you. So bring a book, um, bring a book that you really love and you can read over and over again. Um, bring a journal because if you do go in a cafe or you do go in a restaurant, you're gonna sit there and you're gonna really realize that you're alone. Um, I think when you're walking around, you're really distracted, but once you sit down and stop, the realization comes over you. And so having a little companion, as I said, um, is really, really helpful. Also just make sure that you're connected, like pay the extra money if you can to get a like Wi-Fi egg or a USIM or something like that. Um, just so that if you do feel really freaked out, you can find a map, you can contact someone, so on and so forth. Um, if you really are that anxious, having that connection is completely invaluable. So, And also, if you're traveling for more than one day, don't feel bad about taking a rest day. Um, I did that once in Japan. I was gone for almost a week and I got on, like it was the fifth day and I just felt so worn out. And there was a voice in my head that was like, but Carrie, you're only here for a week. You gotta go, go, go but i decided to go to the store and buy sushi and a lot of snacks and take a nice hot shower watch spirited away in my bed and it was the best decision of my life like it just reset me and i don't regret it and i really think that when we're traveling we really pressure ourselves to like go 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 every day but um really just try and try and chill out give yourself permission to just relax and and take a day off um it's it's no big deal so it's different for everybody but those um those definitely have helped me so yeah anyway i will leave you guys here the sun is about to set perfect timing i will leave you guys here but thank you so much for your questions thank you so much for this i i actually have it i'm trying to find a good place for it but right now it's just sitting on my window which is actually really nice. I, I see it every single day. Um, I'm really, I'm just really, really thankful. I am very excited for our future. This upcoming month is going to be absolutely wild. I'm gonna be all over the place. I'm really excited to share a lot of different places with you in the vlogs. And yeah, I am um, I didn't drink my tea at all and now it's cold. So I'm gonna go reheat my tea and I will, um, I will see you guys next time. Let me know how you guys feel about Q and A's. I used to do one like every two months but um, I don't want them to get repetitive or boring or anything. So let me know how you feel about Q and A's in the comments and um, yeah, I will see you guys next time. Bye bye.